Thanks for watching this video tutorial. It is a free sample from our course, The Ultimate Introduction to V-Ray 4 3ds Max. Make sure to visit our website, mographplus.com, and check the entire course out. This is a massive 17 hour long course. That's 1,030 minutes of high quality and academic video tutorials on V-Ray. Now, let's get started with this video tutorial. In this video, we talk about mesh light. Basically, a mesh light turns an object to a light source. We are going to be working with this simple scene in this lesson. As you can see, I have this backdrop and this artificial plant and a physical camera. To get started with the lighting, let's create a V-Ray light. And this time, let's use the Create panel. So in the Create panel, go to the light tab and select V-Ray. Now select V-Ray light, change the type to mesh and click in the viewport to create the light. Now we need to tell our mesh light which is the object we want to turn it into a light source. So in the modify panel, come down to the mesh light rollout and here is where you specify that object. First click on the peak mesh button and select this object that's called fr underscore zero one which are these small yellow objects in the viewport and now by doing so we have turned those small yellow objects into a light source let's open up our render setting window change the target to active shade mode and make sure the render is very rt and click on render And as you can see in the VRA RT, now these small objects function as a light source. Let me stop the active shade here. Mesh light has some specific options in the mesh light rollout. First, you have flip normals, which allows you to invert the normal of the uh, object that you have selected as your light source. Next, we have replace mesh with light. And uh, if you kind of enable this option, when you pick your mesh, uh, the mesh uh, becomes a light source and the mesh object no longer uh, will be available in the scene. Now uh, we have the extract mesh as node, which lets us restore or recreate the object that we have picked as our mesh light source if we want to have a copy of it. Now let me go ahead and finish the lighting of this simple scene very quickly. For this first light, let's change the unit to watts and set the multiplier to something like 60 maybe. We can render the scene using the production mode. Let me stop the render and show you the render that I have saved in the frame buffer. By the way, if you want to actually store your render in the frame buffer, simply wait for the render to be finished and then click on the save button. Here is our first render, and as you can see, it's quite nice, even without having to add any more lights. Now let me close the frame buffer. Just to make it a bit more fun, let's add another V-Ray mesh light to the scene. Select the existing V-Ray mesh light, right click and choose clone. Set the object to copy and press OK. I have another object in the scene that I want to turn it into a light source. It's called Vase Edge. Now select the second V-Ray mesh light in the Modify panel, activate the Peak Mesh button and select the Vase Edge object. Now let's change the color of this mesh light a bit to make it a bit more interesting. Change the unit to default and set the multiplier to one. Now take a look at the render with this new light. As you can see, because the multiplier of the second light is very low, 
it doesn't affect the lighting that much but the emissive colorful object is quite eye-catching in the scene finally to add a bit fill light and more color balance let's add two simple very plain lights let me select very plain light in the very toolbar start creating the light in the left view now let's move it to the left side of our main object in the top view now let me change the size of this light to something like maybe 85 and 75 let's turn off our mesh lights so we can see how these extra lights are going to affect the scene let me run the active shade and see what we are going to get okay obviously this is very bright let me change the unit to watts and set the multiplier to 3 change the color mode to temperature and set the temperature to 5000 so we have a warmer light on this side now let's add another light to the right side first in the render setting window make sure to lock the current camera so when we switch to another view active shade still would render the camera view that we have right now perfect now select the light in the top view and click on the mirror button change the mode to copy and press ok now let me move the light to the right side and let's see what we have in our active shade let me change the color temperature for this light to a cooler color like uh, 7500 and this way the warm light on the left side and the cool light on the right side will create a very nice color balance in our scene perfect now let me reduce the multiplier for this light to something like one stop the active shade and let me turn on the mesh light that we have in the scene now we can render the scene in the production mode or rather let me show you the result in the frame buffer now as you can see our simple effective lighting is really beautiful the next thing I want to do is to quickly prepare the scene for the final render so let me open up the render setting window change the dimension to something like 1200 and 1600 or you know we can uh, have a smaller or bigger render change the max subdivision to 100 and noise thresholds to maybe 0 0.006 in the GI tab, change the Erdian's map preset to medium and the light cache subdivs to something like a thousand. In the render elements, let's add V-Ray denoiser and change its preset to mild maybe. Now click on the render button and wait for the result can show you my render in the frame buffer right now so here is our final render and as you can see it's pretty clean and nice let me show you V-Ray Denoiser Pass which helps us to get rid of high frequency noises and we have as you can see this clean and amazing pass which is really impossible to get such a clean pass with just render settings I mean you need to increase those render settings like crazy the GI settings like crazy to maybe get something close to this and wait hours and hours to uh, for your render to be finished but using the V-Ray Denoiser Pass that has been added in uh, the Force service pack of uh, V-Ray 3 we get this amazing clean renders basically without that much effort now let me get back to the RGB Pass if I zoom in you can see the edges of our emissive objects are kind of very jagged and aliased to counter that let's enable the lens effect setting in our frame buffer let's turn on the bloom and the glare effect now we're going to talk about the very frame buffer and all of these you know extra effects and windows in a specific future lesson but for this lesson we're just going to quickly go over them let's change the weight and size of the bloom effect to 0.5 and 1 respectively 
and for the glare effect use 0.5 and 10. Now as you can see the results are visible in our render and we don't see that kind of jagged effect anymore. In this lesson we learned about V-Ray Mesh Light and I will see you in the next lesson. Thanks for watching this video tutorial. It was a free sample from our course, The Ultimate Introduction to V-Ray for 3ds Max. Make sure to visit our website mographplus.com and check the entire course out. This is a massive 17 hour long course. That's 1030 minutes of high quality and academic video tutorial. See you next time, guys.